Thousands of years ago, the blacksmith led a technological leap in sub-Saharan Africa. For example, West Africa's Nong culture switched from using stone tools to iron around 1500 BC. Now the 21st century offers the African continent another opportunity to bypass industrialization and leapfrog further into the future using cutting-edge technologies like 3D printing. In recent years, additive manufacturing is the new paradigm in the manufacturing industry which is revolutionizing the industrial landscape. This change looks at new engineering, management, science, technology and innovation skills to fully harness the benefits offered by this advanced process of technology for sustainable development, enabling people to build products and solutions locally. The concept of 3D printing is just getting your computer, taking a data design out of your computer, send it to your, to your printer, then it, it builds the, the object by dropping, uh, by dropping materials layer by layer till it forms the 3D um, object, which you can see you know, from this uh, illustration, this demo that we just did for you. Yeah, 3D printing, it's simple. It's just taking ideas from um, the concept stage to you know, bringing it out into something you can hold. Now, the process is you think about it, you design it, because there must be a design. Now, um, there's no 3D printing without a CAD design. Now, so we go through the idea stage, the concept stage, and down to design. Then from there, we impute it into the system, and it's very straightforward. It produces whatever you design. 3D printing industry uh, in general is an, a kind of a additive manufacturing ecosystem that spans from okay, FDM. FDM is more or less 3D rapid prototyping. Uh, apart from FDM that we commonly see here, like if you look at my office, you see a lot of FDMs who have Ultimaker, Mechabolt, all of them. Then we have another one called SLS, Selective Laser Sintering. Of course, that is a, a kind of FDM that uses powder to make a geometry, make models. A recent report indicates that while Africa is home to 17% of the world's population, it accounts for only 2% of global manufacturing value added. Some estimates suggest that if the current growth of investment in 3D printing continues, 50% of all globally manufactured goods will be printed by 2060. The market size of 3D printing in Africa was valued at 13.78 billion US dollars in 2020 and is expected to grow at an annual rate of 21% to a value of 62.79 billion US dollars in 2028. In Nigeria, trends show that most industries are more involved in extracting natural resources than in manufacturing, as the mining and quarrying sector recorded a total contribution of 5.37 trillion naira, approximately 12.9 billion US dollars to the gross domestic product in 2021. This insinuates the consumability of Nigeria as compared to being production-driven for sustainable growth and development to be witnessed in the country. We are a low-producing nation. When it comes to, if you look at the manufacturing index, the global manufacturing index, we are somewhere, we are somewhere, but when you look at what we produce, you see cement, bread, uh, beverage, and those things, those are the things we actually manufacture on top of our, of our list. And uh, that's just food. And if you look at it, most of the things too are, are imported. 90% of, even if you look at milk for instance, 90% of everything is imported and the process. And so for us to be a very rich nation, we have to produce tools, machines, and all that. If you look at China, the top five, China, Japan, the, if you look at the uh, manufacturing index, what they produce is more of consumer appliances, and all those things that you know that I now process other other things. So uh, for now, I think Nigeria is still uh, a bit, I won't say a bit backward, but we are not yet catch. Uh, we have not yet gotten to a, a position where we'll be comfortable to say uh, 
we are there. Nigeria is actually not a producing country. We are consuming nation. We don't think innovation. No. We don't even care to promote innovation. Let me, let me tell you where the problem st starts from and, and the impact of this problem. Do you know that Nigeria, we import virtually everything as far as machine is concerned from China, Europe, America. We import every machine that we use here. Virtually everything to the extent that we import machines that make toothpick. You look at, okay, let me just come to agriculture. Let me just come to agriculture. Do you know that about 90% of uh, the cocoa they use in the whole world is from Africa? People come to Africa, buy cocoa from farmers, take it to the Western country, they process it. After processing it, the byproduct or maybe uh, chocolate or things like that, they will send it back to us. We prepare for it now. The farmers that, that produce this cocoa, in the value chain, they get like 3% of the value chain. The gap between 100% and 3% is just because we cannot process this cocoa. Nigeria is a consuming society, but Nigerians are highly innovative. Now, there's a lot limiting um, our innovative um, creative minds from being a reality. Um, if you go to every part of the world, now people don't joke with Nigerians. The reason why is because if you have a Nigerian in your firm, they are smart, they are creative. I'm telling you, if you go to any car manufacturing firm in the world, in any country, you must find Nigerians, especially in their design team. Because the society, we are in a place where we struggle for so many things. So it even affects the way we think. Our brain works almost faster. We hardly take a break. Taking a break is not part of our Nigerian thing. So it even affects the way we think. And that's why we are more creative when the, society, when the environment is conducive. Nigerians are innovative. What they need is basic tools to let it out. So if 3D printing is readily available to the common man on the street, then you will discover that the welder that just fixed something for you is not just a welder, he has an idea. But because your idea, you cannot just manufacture the life size, you have to actually have some you know, prototypes that you play with before you go to the life size. Now, if they are able to have those prototypes being done, you discover that you have so many homemade things on the streets. The Minister of Science and Technology said they were going to build a factory. I can't remember the amount, billions of naira, to build just a factory for pencil. Part of the reason why dollar is increasing like, like, like what I don't know is because our non-oil commodities, we don't export from Nigeria outside to make foreign currency, to make profit. The only thing we import is what? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. One of the challenge here is old minds trying to create a future for the country. I've been to so many schools, so many schools in the country, both university, secondary schools, trying to let them know the importance, especially universities. I can tell you I've written to about 76 or so universities federal and state, because I took the list. Now, we try to let them know that your engineering faculty is not an engineering faculty if they cannot play around with 3D printing. What's an electrical and electronics student doing? You say you're a robotics engineer and you don't actually have any physical part. So many times we, we are turned down. The reason is because most of these old minds don't see beyond you know, the mundane way of doing things. We should look at funding research and development. What we have in Nigeria, if you look at our polytechnics, I am close up, I train lecturers all over the country. I see how they feel about R&D. Many of them, they are interested in 
If they finish research and development, they will publish it and become professor. But why did you put it under the shelf? You should produce it. You should, you should be helping people. Because it, it, this is a problem and you, you prefer solutions. So you, after the solution, you keep it under the, under the carpet. You should produce it so that it will, it will, it will, be, it will, it will make an impact. 3D printing technology has a wide variety of applications that cuts across numerous sectors and fields. For instance, it is applied in industrial designs, automotive design, consumer commodities, biomedical engineering and dentistry, as well as aerospace, among several others. The world is going from uh, mass uh, production to mass customization. And that's why you notice that these days, phones, cars, they, you know, they come out more rapidly these days because they get a lot of feedback from customers and uh, you know, they put it to, to their design and reproduce. Many of them use 3D uh, printing technologies now to achieve that. People can bring ideas, even your spoon, any object, functional object, functional object that can do something for you, your phone uh, case, your phone um, stand, any other thing, to parts of airplane, parts of rockets, parts of, you know, uh, cars, automobile cars, uh, agriculture, enclosure for, for, for electronics, and so many possibilities. Of course, it is when you have 3D printers that you can produce spare parts. Don't forget, there is 3D printer that can produce metal. All right? Yes, metal. You go to our automotive industry, of course, if something happens, if, if anything happens, like you have front bumper now has issue like this, they will import it from outside. I can produce front bumper here. What I need to do is just to do cam card. Cam card. I design the front, front bumper with my solid works. The next thing I print it out and fix it. Why do you think that Nigeria is not producing electric vehicles? It's because they, they, are, they, are not, they are not good in additive manufacturing, you know? So we need, to, we need to delve more into additive manufacturing because it is, it, is a, it is a building block for most companies. You see some big machines, huh? they buy maybe big machine from Germany. Just a small component pass, parts of that machine spoil or wear. Somebody will say, okay, should I take this component parts now and pay flight tickets, go to Germany? They produce it there, we bring it back. Or import it from Germany, that's expensive. That component pack, if I take it here now, I design the component pack, print it back, and you fix it, it starts working. If you go to a place like Aba, now you find people, they do shoes. And trust me, they're very good ones. In Bakasi, now, in Aba, a market called Bakasi, in Ariaria. Now, if you go there, you try to design, you know, tell them what you want. They will make it, then you come and say, oh, um, but I don't like this, it like this, I don't like it like that. It, if the person is nice enough, it can do another one for you. If not, you might, might have to manage it. Then, but imagine a system where, especially people that buy in bulk, imagine a system where you can quickly give a design and they produce it. You look at what it looks like. You can see what it looks like before you give a go-ahead for mass production. Waste will be taken care of. <laughs> Time will be taken care of. Now, because 3D printing is also in fashion. Now, I don't have to so describe and describe and you know get disappointed by my tailor. You know the issue of what you ordered and what you got. If the person can simply give you know put together some you know 3D printed parts of it and show me, we begin to make adjustments. The technology presents a great deal of opportunities for Nigeria, a developing country that still grapples with the challenge of meeting needs of its citizens in various sectors, where application of the technology promises vast solution to some inherent problems. Mm -hmm.